Right friends, welcome back to news of the day with prelims focus. Uh, some students are complaining that the news of the day timing is not being sufficient and we will come out of this problem from May 1st. So, please bear with us till May 1st, from May 1st onwards we will make the focus of civil services preliminary separate and you may not have any problem from that date. So, for these two weeks please bear with us. Another point is tomorrow is holiday, there will not be any live on tomorrow. We will meet only on Monday after this and this weekend you will have weekend modules as usual and this news of the day. Yesterday we presented one news item, GSTN data will be totally secure. Here in the lecture it was discussed that GST network is section 25 not for profit company non-government private limited company where centers share is 24 and half, states and two UTs 24 and half, remaining 51 with non-governmental financial institutions. Here one student raised one issue, this is section 8 not for profit company. I would like to clarify in newspapers also several times you come across section 25 not for profit company. Here you see when a company is established with the intention of not for profit that means it will have both the features combined together of companies and trusts. Normally if the purpose is not for profit they go for a trust. If it is to be combined with the qualities of governance of company they establish not for profit company and this section 25 is as per companies act of 1956 and new companies act came into existence. So, that is companies act 2013 as per new companies act it is section 8. So, please understand as per old companies act of 1956 it is section 25 company and new companies act came into force as per the new companies act it should be section 8. So, the right thing is section 8 not for profit company, but in newspapers also you find the mention of section 25. So, section 25 means it is referring to the old companies act, section 8 means no new companies act, section 8 is the right thing to be. In fact, section 8 is the right thing and in some newspapers you find section 25 also referring to the old companies act. Petrol diesel prices to be fixed daily. This news item here before going ahead please look into this three companies Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited. These three account for total 95 percent of outlets in our country and at present what is the system? The present system is petroleum prices are revised once in 15 days and why revision is required you may have a pertinent doubt. Revision is required because of two reasons. The first reason is we are dependent on imports for almost 70 to 80 percent of our petroleum needs and global market prices are totally volatile they change depending on the demand supply and other regional factors and several considerations are there as far as petroleum prices globally are concerned. So, global petroleum prices changes and at the same time our currency is also not stable, our currency is also the value will change. So, because of these two reasons the prices are adjusted once in 15 days and now on experimental basis from probably after a month or so they are going to introduce that on an experimental basis daily revision of petroleum and diesel prices will take place. Daily revision of petroleum and diesel prices will take place that will be implemented on a pilot basis at 5 cities. Uducheri, Visakhapatnam, Udaipur, Jamshedpur and Chandigarh, right. So, another important aspect when it comes to petroleum products, petrol prices were deregulated in 2010 
and diesel prices are deregulated in 2014. So, from examination perspective, both petrol and diesel are deregulated in our country, right. Look into the next one. Somalian forces free Indian ship crew from pirates. Piracy, I explained you last week, stealing of the ships. Stealing of the ships is quite common in some areas of the world and most prominent among them is this coast of Somalia. This portion is quite prominent and Indian forces or Indian ship crew were rescued by the Somali forces. This is the news item. Then India has breached its Tibet commitment, says Beijing and Beijing always talks about one China principle and it objected to the visit of uh, Dalai Lama to Arunachal Pradesh. We discussed about it and now the Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Hema Khandu stated that Arunachal Pradesh did not share its border with China but with Tibet. This infuriated China because the Arunachal Chief Minister referred to Tibet but not China and China feels that one China policy must be respected and already it feels that Dalai Lama is somewhat resorting to separatist activities. So, the statement of Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister that Arunachal Pradesh did not share its border with China, but with the Tibet infuriated China. Then the next one is, poll panel throws open challenge to hack EVMs. This electronic voting machines, the opposition parties recently represented to go back to the paper ballot. Opposition parties recently represented that let us go back to the paper ballot and there are some, some doubts in the minds of opposition parties with regard to the EVMs and now the election commission is the throwing the challenge. Please hack EVMs if you can. In fact, they are going to call computer experts in an open session. They are going to call computer experts in the month of May and it is going to be open challenge to hack electronic voting machines, right. Next one is global interest in PSLV, polar satellite launch vehicle. You can say we are successful as far as polar satellite launch vehicle is concerned and 104 satellites were placed in the orbit, the record ever, please understand, 104 satellites on a single flight were placed in the orbit that is the record ever and now the news item says that there are several orders coming for placing into orbit especially small weight satellites are concerned and PSLV is the successful experiment polar satellite launch vehicle. We are quite successful with this uh, placing satellites in low earth orbit. We are quite comfortable and our expertise is enough for placing satellites in polar orbit or you can say low earth orbit. But the problem is placing around 4 ton satellites, placing around 4 ton satellites that is still yet to be accomplished by India in geostationary set orbit. So, our main problem is with regard to placing heavy weight satellites, right. So, whenever any 4000 kg satellite is to be placed into orbit, we go to this place and we launch from far inland because we are not that developed that or you can say we have not developed the flight or you can say to place heavy weight satellites into geostationary orbit. And one more point I would like to tell you, when you look at the ISRO experiments, three experiments are potential questions for prelims examination. One is RLVTD experiment. 
second one is scramjet technology, scramjet experiment was done, third one is cryogenic engine. So, these three things please go through and read, these three are potential questions, one of them can be potential question for civil services. National Lok Adalat, you may have a doubt, what is this? National Legal Services Authority. National Legal Services Authority is the statutory body based on Legal Services Act of 1987. This National Legal Services Authority is established at Supreme Court level as well as at the state levels also they are established and here one of the mechanism to settle the disputes is Lok Adalat. So, Lok Adalat is the statutory mechanism or you can say it is the alternate dispute settlement mechanism. Please understand, Lok Adalat is alternate dispute settlement mechanism when some cases are with the courts, subsequently they will be withdrawn and pre-litigant stage also that means, the cases which are within the court can be taken up, the cases which are yet to go to the court can also be taken up. So, Lok Adalat is one of the best mechanisms, this is alternate dispute settlement mechanism and this is a statutory body, please understand and it is basically from Supreme Court level right up to Taluka level. Right. So, this is multi-tier mechanism to settle the disputes or you can say out of court settlement of disputes or you can say alternate dispute settlement mechanism. Then center files curative plea on AFSA, AF, SPA, Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Supreme Court said that when an act is committed by the armed forces, it should be thoroughly inquired into address any allegation of use of excessive force. So, each and every action whether it is the death of a criminal or a terrorist or insurgent under this armed forces special powers act must be investigated. And if any excessive use of a force is there, that must be seen, that is the centre's, sorry, that is the Supreme Court's judgment. Now, centre is filing curative petition. The first step is original judgment, then review petition, the third step is curative petition. So, please learn something about curative petition. Curative petition is the last judicial resort available for redressal of grievances. So, first original judgment, then review, third step and the last resort is curative petition and curative petition will be entertained and normally it will look at whether any principles of natural justice are violated, whether any principles of natural justice are violated or the judges are biased. To look into these two aspects, especially this curative petition is admitted. So, curative petition is the last resort for redressal of grievance. Trust erodes under Trump, Putin. Now, the things are just gap is widening between Trump and Putin and the statements by United States of America officials are not supportive or you can say one statement differs from other. So, three, four statements are given in this article, please go through it and now it appears that the gap between America and Russia may widen further, right, because Putin is totally unpredictable person. Donald Trump is also equally unpredictable person. When two unpredictable persons are there, what will happen? Totally unexpected things are bound to happen, right. So, this is with regard to Syria incident. Columbus seafront makes for China backed financial city. Now, overall China is going to invest 13 billion dollars. 
China is going to invest overall 13 billion dollars beginning from 2018, 13 billion dollars in Sri Lanka. International Financial Services Center is expected to come up near Colombo. Already China invested in Hambantota port. Now International Financial Services Center is going to come up near Colombo and ultimately Sri Lanka will be having more and more economic interests of China in future. Already Maldives, already Maldives is going with the Chinese investments, Sri Lanka is going with Chinese investments, Pakistan is going with Chinese investments. So, these are the signs which are not good for India. Then fold fiscal deficit at 3 percent till financial year 20 NK Singh panel. NK Singh panel was constituted to review Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act. To review FRPM Act, this NK Singh panel was constituted and as per the initial reports, it was ascertained that this NK Singh panel recommended instead of fiscal deficit of 3 percent or 3.2 percent, it recommended limiting public debt to overall 60 percent of GDP, 40 percent for centre, 20 percent of the states. So, overall public debt is to be limited to 60 percent of GDP if you combine states and centre together. And now this news report says till 2020 let us stick to 3 percent of fiscal deficit target. Right? So, please do not forget. NK Singh panel was constituted basically to review fiscal responsibility and budget management act basically with a view to give leverage to the center to expand the fiscal deficit in times of more expenditure is required for creating capital assets. right? And the panel to suggest norms for virtual currencies like Bitcoin. Today, there is one small article with regard to what is meant by Bitcoin and now the center has decided to close the regulatory gap and one committee is being established. This is about the committee going to be established by the center and this cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. This I will present one capsule and cyber security is another important aspect. So, cryptocurrency and bitcoin, cyber security, we will have two capsules in this month itself. Right. Let us go to the prelims 17 discussion. Now, yesterday one student raised, high CASA facilitates reduction in cost of funds, thereby net interest margin can improve. Student is asking how? High CASA. High CASA means, CASA is nothing but the percentage of savings account and current account deposits to the total deposits. When the percentage of deposits, savings accounts, current accounts increases, then the interest paid by the banks or you can say the cost of funds for the banks will come down automatically. Why? Because current account they need not pay any interest, it is 0 percent. When companies are parking money with banks under current account, banks do not pay anything and savings account it is around 4 percent and if people are depositing in fixed deposit then it may be 7 percent or 8 percent or 6 and a half percent. So, when these deposits are more naturally, this average cost of funds will come down or you can say the profitability for banks will increase and we discussed the disadvantage also yesterday of having this more. So, up to one limit it is ok. I hope you are clear otherwise similar type of question will appear in the discussions which we are going to take up in the month of May. It will be very clear to you at the time. Then one more question of yesterday, one student raised that here in the question it is framed as this is the initiative of, here four departments are given, 
it is the initiative of and one student feels that it is the initiative of department of pharmaceuticals, but it is implemented by bureau of pharma PSUs of India. It is absolutely correct. Here, please go through these sentences. This Pradhan Mantri Jan Aushadhi Yojana initiated by department of pharmaceuticals or you can say initiated by government of India also broadly speaking. So, initiated is little bit broader term. The question was framed, framed with the intention of implementation agency or this word could have been implemented by. So, broadly speaking the initiative is by department of pharmaceuticals, but the implementing agency is bureau of pharma PSUs of India. But incidentally, this department of pharmaceuticals is not given here. So, the right answer must be Bureau of Pharma PSUs of India only. But the thing is, instead of initiative, it must be implementation agency, right. So, please understand this Pradhan Mantri Jan Aushadhi Yojana, which is basically meant for giving the generic medicines at low cost, is being implemented by Bureau of Pharma PSUs of India and in fact it is giving financial support of up to 2 and a half lakh rupees if I am not wrong, right. So, next one, look at the following sentences. Supreme Court is monitoring national register of citizens in Assam and if you look at northeast, please do not forget Assam is the state where this national register of citizens is being prepared. Supreme Court is man monitoring it. It is a part of Assam Accord. Basically, here this is to detect the illegal migrants. There were several disturbances prior to 1980s because of illegal migration and now to detect the illegal migrants who crossed over to Assam since 25th March 1971. So, here both the sentences are correct. So, if someone is talking about national register of citizens that pertains to Assam and Supreme Court is monitoring it, it is to detect the illegal migrants who crossed over to Assam since 25th March 1971. Incidentally, 25th March was the date on which operation or you can say the Bangladeshi authorities now declared as genocide day when the Pakistani authorities violently attacked and subsequently resorted to genocide. Which of the following organization is meant for looking at the suspect financial transactions? Here I have given four organizations. I would like to explain you one by one SFIO. Serious Fraud Investigation Office. This is a Serious Fraud Investigation Office is under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. It looks at big corporate frauds. Corporates, if they commit big frauds, that is looked after by Serious Fraud Investigation Office. Financial Intelligence Unit. If you are depositing 1 crore rupees in bank, let us exam let us take for an example if you are depositing rupees 1 crore in the bank then that is some sort of suspicious financial transaction and that goes to fiu financial intelligence unit this is under the ministry of finance so right answer is fiu dicgc is deposit deposit insurance credit guarantee corporation this is the wholly owned subsidiary of reserve bank of india which looks at the insurance needs of the customers when banks collapse. When banks are collapsing, then each customer will be up to a maximum of 1 lakh rupees, it will be insured. NPCA is the organization behind digital transactions in the country or promoting retail transactions and nowadays in a, in a digital way. Nowadays, several advanced economies are talking about negative interest rates as part of their monetary policies. Read the following sentences in this context. Negative interest policies. Several advanced economies are resorting to negative interest rate policies. What is meant by negative interest rate policy? 
the negative interest rate policy is basically to disincentivize parking of cash by commercial banks with the central bank. Let us assume today SBI has got cash of 100 crores. If it parks with Reserve Bank of India, now Reserve Bank is paying 6 percent which is reverse repo. In the negative interest rate policy, if SBI is parking money with Reserve Bank of India, then SBI has to pay in return. Instead of Reserve Bank of India paying to SBI, SBI is required to pay some money or some interest. So, this is negative interest rate policy, this is being adopted by some economies in advanced countries and this is to promote lending activity by the commercial banks so as to pull up inflation as well as GDP in developed countries. So, both are correct. Here negative interest rate policy is when banks are parking cash with central banks instead of central bank paying to the bank bank has to pay to the central bank, this is negative interest rate policy. So, the purpose is do not put cash with central bank, give for lending, go for aggressive lending, go more and more money, give more and more money for lending. So, to propel growth, this is the mechanism adopted in advanced economies. When the import duty on raw materials is more than that of the finished products. You see, when the import duty on raw materials, let us take the example of rubber. If the import duty on raw materials, if the import duty on rubber is more than the imported tires, when the import duty on rubber is more than the import duty on tires, then what happens when we are importing rubber and manufacturing tires in our country because of high import duty, then our tires will become costly than imported tires. So, our domestic industry will become unviable. So, in some cases industry is complaining about this. So, when the import duty on raw materials is more than the finished product example is rubber versus tires, then this is tax structure is known as inverted duty structure, right. It is quite frequently in the news last year. So, if someone talks about inverted duty structure, please do not forget here the import duty on raw materials is more than the finished products. Recently, scientists from IIT Kharagpur found the evidence of river Chandrabhaka in recent times. And 2016, two things please do not forget. Saraswati river existence was found by one panel. Please look at the name of the panel. Saraswati river existence was found at the same time. IIT Kharagpur scientists stated that there was existence of Chandrabhaka river in ancient times and it is believed to have existed almost 1 or 2 kilometers away from Konark temple, right. So, this is about Chandrabhaka. Look at the following sentences, Talgo technology, this is in the news in 2016. Talgo is the technology of Spain based on which Indian Railways intends to run high speed trains on the existing tracks up to 200 kilometers per hour. You can say semi high speed at present trains maximum speed potential on Indian Railways is 160 kilometers per hour only in short stretch between Nizamuddin and Agra. And other than that, most of the tracks are fit for 140, 130, 120, something like that. So, semi high speed trains up to 200 kilometers per, per hour are going to be run on Indian railways. The technology is Talgo. So, this Talgo technology belongs to Spain, please do not forget. Then the first bullet train of the country, Mumbai Ahmedabad, this is based on Shinkansen technology of Japan, please understand. Japan is going to support financially also. It is giving soft loan. What is the meaning of soft loan? 
when the terms and conditions and interest is quite low, that is known as soft loan. Japan is giving soft loan and Shin Consent technology will be used for the bullet train project between Mumbai and Ahmedabad. This is going to be the first bullet train. Then we discussed yesterday about this hyperloop. At the same time, baby boom, please do not forget. Baby boom is the fastest aircraft manufactured recently news item in United States of America. So, hyperloop is the proposed mode of passenger and freight transportation that would propel a pod like, pod -like vehicle through reduced pressure tubes. Right? So, all three are correct. So, please remember these technologies. Which of the following organization is no nominated as central registry for KYC database? Know your customer database. Government is going to have in future single KYC. If you are going for bank loan, if you are depositing money, if you are investing in shares, if you are investing in mutual funds, if you are investing in bonds, one KYC will be enough. One KYC, that central KYC or you can say your KYC will be maintained with one central organization. The name of the organization, probably many of you may not know this, answer is a CERSAI. So, this is the organization which is nominated to maintain central registry of KYC database. Which of the following is wrongly matched? Hambantota port, Sri Lanka, this is being built with Chinese assistance. This Kyakpu deep water port, Myanmar, we learnt few days ago. This Kyakpu onwards, China is going to lay a pipeline and Kyakpu port is a part of road and belt and road initiative or you can say silk road initiative of uh, this China. Then the meat zone dam project. This is also in Myanmar, meat zone dam project is in Myanmar, it is the bone of contention between Myanmar and China, right. Then SBI and ICICI banks are declared as domestic systemically important banks, domestic systemically important banks at the global level, global systemically important banks are there, there are around 30 or so. No Indian bank is into global systemically important banks. In India, we have two domestically or you can say domestic systemically important banks. What is the meaning of systemically important? The meaning is they are too big to fail. So, the meaning is if a state bank of India fails, it will have wider ramifications on the economy. That is why two big banks are declared. There are several reasons for declaring like this. So, SBA and ICICI are declared as domestic systemically important banks and here they are too big to fail and at the same time, if at all they fail, they will have wider ramifications in the financial system and banks declare DCIPs have to maintain higher capital adequacy ratio. Please understand whatever the banks which are declared as DCEPs, they have to maintain slightly higher capital adequacy ratio, the mandatory capital adequacy ratio as per Basel III norms is 9 percent, they have to maintain slightly higher capital adequacy ratio also. Look at the last question, FSSAI is planning to promote food fortification in large scale in the country food fortification. What is the meaning of food fortification? We are taking lot of food. What is the need for food fortification? Because in food fortification, the food products will be enriched with micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals, whatever we are purchasing in the food products, vitamins and minerals will be enriched artificially. Basically, to take care of malnutrition problem in our country. So, the meaning of food fortification, please do not forget, this is the practice of enriching the food products with the micronutrients. So, certain words, please do not forget, this is food fortification. 
Then yesterday we discussed about monetary transmission. These words very important if you look at civil services preliminary examination and whatever I am discussing, I think they will be useful when you are writing mains also, right. So, we came to the end of this and my goal is at least to, to discuss 500 to 600 questions, diverse questions before you write civil services preliminary examination during the third week of June. Right friends, please do join for editorial discussion and we are going to start within 5 minutes. Have a nice day. Thank you. Elinda Bane.